I'm Jenny. Welcome. Nice to see you. Hi, I'm Jenny, and today I give you a wild horse in the middle of Pahrump. No, just kidding. You and I are going to go to the Amargosa Cemetery and learn all kinds of stuff and hear stories from Bobby. Cemetery cleaning 101, or just a fun-filled afternoon in the cemetery with a strange man in a van. Well, he did do a background check first, so, you know. <laughs> I would like to share with you somebody who is alive and well and making history every day. And as you know, cleaning graves is not my forte. I have learned so much from the small amount of time. You're normally here for hiking or history. Don't worry, don't go far. I'll be back in the desert again. Hiking Death Valley with a friend. Hi. I'm Jenny, and I'm in the Amargosa Cemetery with my friend Bobby. <laughs> Welcome to the Amargosa Memorial Cemetery. I'm joining my friend Bobby. We'll be here in a minute. Let's go inside and take a look. Here's the Kane family here. Oh, okay. And here's another port, uh, a porcelain portrait. And you can feel it. It, it, it feels like a, a toilet. Like, no offense to her, but the, the same, that's porcelain. And I don't know, I don't know the process. They've been doing this since, it started out in Europe, especially in France. They were very big into the porcelain portraits, I'd say late 1800s. It came over to the States, I would say early 1900s. There, there's a lot out west though. There's a lot out east, but there's a lot out west. It was a very big thing out west, Colorado, California, in the early 1900s, so. Where is she? She's, because I noticed the, right behind her is one of those, you used to put a quarter in and be able to see. It's like a banana. Oh yeah, there. yeah. Because I, I find it fascinating what picture they chose. Is she in, I don't see it. it to me it looks like a, pop out? looks like a casino to me. But and I was thinking, I mean, the first thing that popped in my mind was San Francisco. Out east, they get like all the, the gook and all the, the biological stuff gets all caked on there. But out west, they last a lot longer and they look a lot nicer. And what is this? So this is a uh, ladies auxiliary VFW. So she was a part of the VFW. Uh, and a lot of these, there's different things. There's World War I, World War II, Vietnam. But they have, this is where you put the flag. Instead of putting it in the ground, you put it in here. Oh! Yeah. We need to get a flag out of the car. Yeah, so this is Luella Avalon. Yeah, we can do a flag on this one for yeah, sure. Yeah! And, and, and I mean, they had the bake off. They bake, the auxiliary is in charge of like cooking the food. Exactly. And like making sure everybody's happy. They do a fantastic so she job. she needs a flag for sure. Yeah, and you can see the stakes in the ground. Those are for those are for uh, flags as well. Oh, and then look over there. That's somebody, and somebody has a bench. <gasps> Shout out to the bench in the cemetery. There was another bench right in front of me. Yeah. And then, then did you say this was a veteran? This is a veteran. This... Oh, the the headstone that's in the ground. Yeah. That's a bronze one. Is a corporal in the U.S. Army during World War II. And it's in pretty good shape. It's really good shape. And this was a uh, Wallace Everett. He lived a long life. He was 80. Yeah. Yeah, he sure was. Good for him. Benches. There is a, uh, one of my favorite graves. I get asked all the time, what's my favorite grave of all time? And there is a, in Savannah, Georgia, in Bonaventure Cemetery, there's a gentleman, he was a poet. He had a, he had a, a tragic life early on. He lived to be an older gentleman. But he was one of our, our country's greatest poets. And his name was Conrad Aiken. And Conrad Aiken has a beautiful, beautiful uh, family plot in Savannah's uh, Bonaventure Cemetery. It overlooks the Wilmington River. <laughs> and this is before benches. You can see there's probably three, four, five, ten benches in this cemetery. I, I, oh. 
Yeah, they're yeah, all over the place. Yeah, Bobby's absolutely correct, because now that I put my head up and take a look, there's a bench there, there's a bench there, that's the bench we just came from, the bench right behind him is yeah. the one that I actually noticed. Right here? Yeah. Oh, there's two over there, there is one there, there is one there, probably one behind there that I don't notice, because yeah. I'm short. Conrad Aiken, he was the first person, he, 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 he specifically designed his his uh, tombstone as a bench and this is unheard of at the time this is uh oh. this is early 70s when he died and he died at, at about 75 years old and on on the bench it, it it it's his poetry and his and his wife's buried there too but he did it for a reason now, i love this reason he's it, it, he made the bench as his tombstone so people can come and enjoy a cocktail and watch the boats go by on the Wilmington River in Savannah. And it's, 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 I love it. So it's a, it's a tradition of mine to go visit Conrad Aiken and I always have a little bottle of hooch, little bottle. I, of course I don't drink and drive afterwards. <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's tradition to, to, to have a little sip on his, uh, on his, uh, while sitting on his, his tombstone. It's way more common now, but and that's yeah. more for the family to come and enjoy themselves and and and, and ha spend time with their their deceased loved one. But he did it for strangers. Fifty, hundred, twenty, two, two thousand years from now, they can come and enjoy a cocktail on his bench, and that's why he designed it so strangers can come and and sit on his headstone. It's, it's, it's fa he was a character. He was a very very uh, he's a wonderful character in history. Here's another flagpole. Here you can you can. That's why we put a light for him. Yeah, that's nice. And he served, if he served in World War II in 1930, World War II started in, technically in 1941, but when we really got into the fight, it was 44, 45. So he was a young, young man. If, if there, he was able to fight there, he was 15, no. 16 years old. Yeah. Wait, in World War II, our government took 15 year olds? The cutoff was kind of at uh, V Day. So in 1945, I, I want to say it's summer 45, that was the kind of cutoff. But there was there were several people that they they said they wanted to fight. 15, 16, 17. There's a famous movie about that with Ricky Schroeder. I can't remember the name of it, but it, it was about I think he was 12 and he fought. He was in the Navy. A lot of times they got waivers from their parents, but the the youngest one was 12 years old. And then is his wife have a colored porcelain yeah that's so that picture that's exactly what it is so yeah that's a color uh porcelain. now they have like uh that's oh, that's okay. porcelain you can you can hear it you can tap on it uh and they're pretty hard that's nice our granny that, that's yeah. what they're able to withstand a lot of uh sun and everything else so this is pretty new 2015 only. just not moisture like not not moist, not moist, not mold, not right. So back east, when you're cleaning something like this, this they'd never look like this. Even six years, this would be covered in mold. At back, all the all the all the biological elements that, that that get caked on there. This should last a millennia. I hope so. What a nice looking woman. That is an old grave. No, what is that? Just because anytime. Though I see graves that are surrounded by wrought iron, I think it's an old grave. But that's not really an old grave. That's 96 in 2007. It is old fashioned. Same, I mean, that's modern. Definitely for sure. Kind of fencing compared to Death Valley Junction. I just stumbled upon the fact that at first I thought Luis, Edgar Luis, was still alive. And Bobby pointed out, well, okay, she was born in 1917. Let's do some math. And I'm like, oh yeah, probably not. But he just explained to me that when you purchase your headstone, it doesn't necessarily include adding when Luis was buried. Right. So, so we don't know when she passed on. Right. Like you see, he, he passed on 89, which is a uh, long time ago. And that would come like the, the, the chiseling and all that, the, the stenciling would come there. But she, she obviously outlived him. And a lot of times they move on. They they, they get buried somewhere else. Uh, the the spouse who passes away after, 
maybe the kids when she died, like somebody chooses to do something different and they don't necessarily right. they cremate her or cremate. they do something like that. Exactly. But they they won't they and if that's the case they're not gonna spend money to because it is it it costs money for somebody to come out here and they, they yeah. hand do it. And uh it's quite the art to do it. But it, it a lot of times they they just leave it alone. Yeah. But I if I was a betting man I I would say she was passed on. But 104. I was looking over here at the corner of my eye. Are these just unknowns? I don't know what these are. Now, <laughs> cemetery uh, protocol, uh, you, you don't ever step on the, 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 the stones. That's what I just realized. I was like, yeah. wait, if that is a headstone, I'm technically yeah. standing on it. I don't think it, it is a headstone. Good... It looks like a base for a headstone, but I don't think it's a headstone. Uh, there, there should be something written or something like that. I was told this by a gentleman in Charleston, South Carolina, who uh, uh, one of the the uh, groundskeepers there, uh, he was like, as long as you don't step step on the headstone, you're okay. You can go all around it and everything else. So he, 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 I think he worked for Magnolia Cemetery for, I want to say, 40 years, and he's still there. He's a great guy, a wonderful gentleman. Every time I see him, I bring him lunch. Anything in particular? Or for lunch? lunch. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just lunch. Okay. Well, I don't know. Maybe he likes like a certain crab sandwich. Or yeah, no. He's like, like uh, give me. I always give him McDonald's. He's like, I love McDonald's the chicken nuggets, so I bring him chicken nuggets. He's McDonald's a great guy. Chicken nuggets. That's the one thing I actually get at McDonald's. That's. He's funny. a hardworking gentleman. He he's got to be seventy five now. And Buford Dwayne Bagby, right. you have quite the impressive grave. So he has a marker here too. If you can see, and you can see his flag is. Oh, he has a VFW. Yeah, we'll we'll replace his flag. It's 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 a uh, it's seen better days. Not the worst, but not the best. In case you do not know, you do not just throw flags away in a trash can. That's right. A number of things that you can do with flags afterwards. Uh, respectful uh, uh, closing ceremonies for flags. Your local VFW, American Legion post office have it where it's a drop-off box and you can put them in there and there's a, a process to 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 uh, uh, do the flags that way this I, we could probably do this it, it it's been in the dirt for a while but I don't but I well yeah it, torn yeah. ripped obviously yeah, and uh, it's not faded a it, it, it's a little it's yeah. a little dirty it's a little faded but my, uh, my, you should not have your flag on the ground. No, you should never have your flag on the ground. I, I pick up more flags than I know what to do with. It, in my opinion, if if you served in a war or even served in general, uh, your flag deserves to look new and, and special and everything. Else. And we have our marker here where we can we can put the flag in here where it's not going to hit the ground again, right here. Now is he? No, his okay. marker is slightly different because it because he was a member of the VFW. Yeah. But we're going to do we're going to replace this flag. It, it, it it's okay. time. What is, what is that little tiny headstone over there? They're used as a, a, a um, temporary headstones before like back east our, our the, the protocol is to wait about a year for the ground to settle. And then you put the normal headstones on there. But sometimes they'll leave uh, the, uh, the headstone there. And this, this was, uh... Oh, that would make complete sense. That's right. the pre-marker. Like, exactly. hey, we put them in the ground when this is done being, exactly. and it's ready to be placed. Yes. And I so this... appreciate the placement, and I notice he likes old cars. Does he? Well, because look at Oh, no, I didn't see that. That's very nice. He's got, like... Oh, yeah. I didn't look at jalopies that. and stuff. I mean, so he must have liked it, I guess. Yeah. So that always comes first. After about six months a year, the the regular headstone will come in. Well, make sure they have everything correct. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he served in the Korean War. Yes. Uh, 50, 51 to 53. Or we don't, I don't know. I I did not learn about the Korean War in, in it's kind school. Of, yeah, we, we, we don't we, talk about it, really. A lot of people call it the Forgotten War, but it was in a very important war, for sure. It's such an underrated and underappreciated war, and it was a very brutal war as well. And my, I had a uh, a grandfather, my my step grandfather, who was Korean, fought for the South Koreans, and he he had amazing stories. He's passed on now. An amazing, but just the heroism that came out of that war that that we're just now discovering just how brutal that was. 
Wait, so, do you do you travel with multiple size flights? Yes, yeah, I, have, I have about twenty of them at a, at a time. At yeah. different different sizes because I have a I have a lot of small ones. This yeah, this is about this yeah, this is it. Small ones are great too, but I, I carry with these. Home Depot, uh, I think they're buck thirty each. So this was the same size flag as the other one we just got out of the dirt, but we'll plant this. So there's two places we can plant this. We can plant it right here. We can do it over right there or there. I think I think here is better. What do you That's think? That's kind of nice. Yeah. esposa y. Wait, yeah. Do you speak Spanish? A little bit, yeah. I mean, I'm sure the town knows, but just look at the juxtapose of like, oh, I have a small wooden cross, and I'm just noticing. I'm gonna pick this up real quick. Let's put this back inside. A veteran guy right here. There we go. Now I can see Bobby had just mentioned, oh, I probably could clean this up. And he's a PFW. I, I have never seen those before because they're all... For, for, for the, uh, you can see there, there used to be a, a flag in there. Ah! So they, they were made for to, to put the flags in. This was just like this. So uh, we'll, we'll replace this because I, I believe every, every veteran who uh, served, especially in wartime, deserves a new flag. That's why I carry so many. <laughs> and I've gone through, if, I, if I've spent $2,000 in flags over the years, it, it would be a, a conservative estimate. <laughs> so, <laughs> See that big pile of rocks yonder? Yeah, and the little gazebo. Right. It looks like they, they put those rocks there so you can align the graves yourself. You know what I mean? Like to decorate your, your family member's grave. Now this reminds me of... Mexican cemeteries because when I was in Mexico the cemeteries have like little buildings and stuff like yeah. little mausoleum sort of ish but some of them look like houses some of them look like it's quite uh, cultural uh, how uh, like the Mexicans uh, uh, Mexican uh, descendants or, or Irish descendants or even even uh, Native Americans it, it, how they uh, Catholic. Yeah. Well, I'm and just like. Catholics. And it goes, I was like, eyes by Catholic. How awesome is this? It's. Uh, uh, oh, Miss Mendoza. I like the little window. And that's another porcelain example of a porcelain, right? Look at all the, the things inside. Oh my gosh, Fernando. He died young too. Oh, he died very young. Oh. So a lot, a lot of the bronze plaques, like this one, has edging around it. And if you just dig in the dirt a little bit, you can find that it does. You see that? No. Oh! Yeah. No, he has what he's what Bobby's talking about is this. Not only does it have this edging, but it has like a concrete, yeah, a concrete edging. Exactly. So we can. I, and I do a lot of uh, restorations where you just clean this up, you get it off the ground, and this will last a lot longer and it'll look nicer. And this is interesting, actually. Uh, Mr. Riggler here. He's, he was a captain in the U.S. Army Air Corps in World War II, and if you know anything about that campaign, the air war campaign, especially over Germany. It was brutal on us. We, we lost a lot of people. Uh, DFC-1OLC, that's Distinguished Flying Cross, one Oak Leaf Cluster. So he was a very decorated gentleman, a uh, captain. Absolutely 100% of here. We got, we, I have a few flags. We're, there, we're around five veterans right now. And why they don't have flags is beyond me, but they, these are all, uh, they all served in either Korea or World War Two. I, mean, I wonder if they're all friends because they're all in the same. I spot. would imagine they would know each other, especially in a small area like this. So we're going to clean this one up. Is that akin to the Purple Heart? No, no. Purple Hearts when you you were injured in war. Oh, yeah. okay. Distinguished Flying Cross is when you did something gallant, ab well above and beyond in the air. Like in, oh, okay. on the ground, it'd be like a, a, a silver star, the, the, the equivalent of a silver star. I, I knew several guys that sat behind desks and, and were just as, as heroic uh, 
gathering information from the enemy or something during World War II. Everybody contributed to that war, uh, even cooks. Like, I have a, res- a lot of respect for, for, for our, our cooks and, and who never saw a, a day of action, but they, they fed... They were just as important. Everybody contributed. Everybody's a hero, especially fought in World War II. 5, 000, my, my, my belief in 5,000 years from now, they're going to look back at that war and say, well, those men and women saved uh, future humanity. They, 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 really, they surely did, in my opinion. I think we should clean this up. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Well, so, we have two, technically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> Let's do this before the sun goes down. Uh, yeah, we go, yes, definitely. All right, go. So Bobby's going to the vehicle, but over here is a couple more. So there's there's a lot of veterans in the cemetery. William Smith, World War II Navy, and loving memory. This should be easy right now. Use my hands and get that off of there. Those we love don't go away. They walk beside us every day. Bobby has a kit. And I'll remind viewers that in the bucket are a lot of different stuff, but most of the stuff is not needed for the desert. I want to say I want to say spray and go, but that's not it. What's the name? What is it that I'm thinking of? Wet and forget. Wet and forget. <laughs> Right. Here you go. Yeah, let's remove this stuff. Move these rocks. Give us a little more uh, what is, oh, breathing room. I wonder why they're there. Well, they don't exactly make sense. So what I, I like to do is take a before and after photo. And so we pretty much found the edges. We just clean them up a little bit. Now his sank into the ground. These two gentlemen died, uh, Mr. Wilson and Mr. Wrigglers died within 14 days of each other. Uh, so, uh, but Mr. Wrigglers, uh, it looks like it's it's sunk into the ground and it would it'd be great to kind of raise it up, but we're not going to do that. We'll, we'll just, we'll, uh, we'll trench it out for any rainwater and everything so it doesn't get covered again. thing is that we, we get it out of the dirt as much as possible. Because eventually it'll be it'll be buried by the elements. Wind, rain. Yeah, I mean you can definitely see from the grave with the hind body. Yeah. So much more I thought it would be Edward is sinking, basically. Robert, that's what it is. Hey, here's, here's Charlie Lee. Alright, so we got us. Yeah, he's like way sunken. Sort he of. was. He, there's still a lot to go, but the important thing, we got him off the ground to where he's not on. There we go. We'll just build a little trench leading up to the roadway here. You see how we trenched it out? Oh, that's 
Uh, and he, he's he's up there with Mr. Smith and Mr. Wilson too. It's the same. Why this was sunken in, I don't know, but it, it's they're they're all level. He just needed to come off off the ground. So we're gonna clean them up real fast. Yeah, he's pretty dirty. Most of these bronze plaques have a base like this. Some don't. Some there, there's a few, but very rare. But uh, most of them have a, and some spread out like this. Perfection is not a. <laughs> Bobby asked me if I was a perfectionist, and I was like, well, sometimes by accident. Sometimes by accident. But as you were just mentioning, like, well, yeah, like you, it's not going to necessarily be exactly like it was when it went in the ground, because sure. it's. He's been here 20, for 30 years, 30 years, almost 23 years. Yeah. 22, just, just, no, 23, 23 years. Anyways, you have to just accept a certain level of like, this is a plus and then it's not perfect. So what we're going to do, we're going to put some distilled water on the bronze. It doesn't affect the bronze or stone for that matter. And we're going to scrub it. Uh, we, I have a little bit of uh, pH negative uh, soap that we use. And this should come out really nice. And may maybe a little bronze cleaner afterwards. So you get it wet. And we, we could do a, I, I took a, I always take like a before and after photo, uh, but you, you'll see the, the difference for sure. Just a little dab, it goes a long way. Uh, I never look up these veterans before I clean them. I, I, it doesn't matter if they were cooks or mechanics or if they were generals or they are uh, Medal of Honor recipients. It, it's to me, it, it's it's the 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 uh, condition of the graves is what concerns me. Everybody, and I mean everybody, especially served in the military or, or just people in general, deserve to at least have their name you know, visible to the, to, to people and, uh, and, and have a good grave. And, and these, these, are, these guys are all U S Marine Corps, Korea, uh, U S Marine Corps, World War II, uh, uh, you know, army air Corps in World War II. I mean, these guys deserve to have a flag. They deserve to have their names because these are all heroes. And that's, that's my, that's my opinion. Oh, wow. So that's the finished product. We'll, we'll, we'll straighten this out. Wow. Bobby had mentioned that when he's back east, what did you mention? Three hours was the longest grave that? Oh, I've taken three months, yeah. Three months? Yeah. There's one that did. Three months, okay. They're Obviously. really bad. Well, and obviously, three months is I go back on a regular basis, right. because we have the, the of putting the flag here or here, I, uh, and you can see that these were meant for the flags. Right there. Uh, my personal opinion is I feel that like the wind is going to whip that out. Okay, so we just do that. Yeah, because it gives a little bit more yeah. protection, and it won't catch flight. Yep. But you see the difference. Uh, how? Where yeah. We first found it and how it is now. Robert Edward Donald. Let's walk over here super quick. My body's doing it, but I'm going to just do some brushing. <gasps> Look at that. There's my mountains. Just look at what we're surrounded by. Oh, we're losing sunlight. I'm gonna get that trash right there. And the sun is going down. We are camping. We need to go. So I'm, don't know. Will we be back in the morning? Maybe, maybe not. 
if we're not back in the morning, I can always come back. There is another VFW member and another VFW member. Hi, Betty. How are you? <gasps> another veteran, Robert Price, who fought in the Korean War. There's a lot of people that fought in the Korean War here. There's Maxine. I found more trash, but I either need to pick this up. Oh yeah, this goes on his grave. Then we're gonna put all the cars up in the front here. And the rocks here. Got my trash. There's the cars back. Even though we're losing light, uh, Mr. Fulton. But uh, that's what we, I was noticing how beautiful that sunset is. A little bit of rain over there. Down the edges. Unburied them. And those are marble? This is con yeah, this is granite. Granite? Yeah. Okay, so it's granite, bronze, or standing granite that you normally see? White marble, okay. There may be even more now. And then there's internment, like a cremation that you get put in the wall or something like that. There's all sorts mm. of, and, and you get, of course, not all of them have crosses. It already looks 10 times better. Yeah. The simple act of digging out the concrete makes the grave immediately about 80% better. Yeah. As Bobby was mentioning when I was not filming, that uh, it just, sometimes it just needs a little edges carved out and a little bit of water. Get in there. Here we go. See, now here's the thing with Bobby. Bobby does not do this for accolades. He just does this to bring smiles to your face and his own. And that's one of the most beautiful things I absolutely love about the situation. Bobby, if you enjoy restoration of graves, you can find him at Our Heroes Graves on Instagram and in YouTube. And links are down below in the description, of course. Look at all of this. Yay! Shout out to David. Skirt fits perfect. Thank you very much. Unlike Bobby, I will ask you. Smash my like button, pump my stock. Love you. Be grateful. Make good choices in your own adventures, and I'll catch you on the flip side.